welcome friends to this monthly meeting now on new technology of live streaming only and the audience is spread all over the world in a way it's a good idea that you don't have to leave your homes don't have to come to a particular hall don't have to buy plane tickets don't have to drive in your cars and no weather will stop you from attending the meeting so in a way this high tech stuff is good for us though i love seeing all of you physically also now i have to see you with the inner eyes only and you are also seeing me with both inner eyes and outer eyes today happens to be the 19th of june in this country united states they are celebrating what they called juneteenth they combining the two words june and 19th calling it juneteenth because this is a celebration of the day that the slavery was ended by an order of emancipation given by president lincoln abraham lincoln gave an order and two and a half days two days later they celebrated on the 19th of june that year that the we have been liberated slaved from slavery so that some people call it freedom day also so i like to mention this to you because when we are on a spiritual path we are trying to achieve freedom from the slavery of our human body the human body is like a prison and we are entrapped in it and we start identifying ourselves with the prison we think that the body is ourself we are li- living inside the body and not only living inside the body inside several bodies so that is why i would like to mention this again and again that meditation that we do is to discover the existence of inner bodies to find out who we really are and not think of the physical body alone as our own self that is why let me speak to you today about meditation what do we meditate for i notice people are meditating for peace of mind understandable be be repeating a word again and again no matter what word you repeat i have experimented with that you can repeat any word keep on repeating it gives you peace of mind why is that because by repeating the mind first with the tongue then with your mind you don't give enough time to the mind to think of other things and it is always constantly the mind roaming around to think of other things that creates disturbance in our mind and takes away our peace if the mind were still we would always be peaceful and calm but the mind thinks so much thinks of what happened in the past thinks of what is going to happen in the future that we are not calm at all and we get so perturbed so that is why a lot of people meditate to get peace of mind but that's not the only reason for meditating i remember when i came to united states first was studying at harvard university there was a lot of talk of using meditation in performing good executive function outside in fact both in the 60s and the 70s i held seminars and workshops with high executives of different corporations one was only for vice presidents and presidents of corporations where i taught them how to use meditation to make better executive decisions in their business now meditation can help in that also the reason why meditation can help in an outward duty is because meditation allows us to use an inner faculty which we don't use too much called intuition intuition or a gut feeling that we get is very useful for making important decisions but we are constantly being trained to use our minds to use logic to use reason to make these decisions that is why we are not so perfect at making good decisions because we don't use a faculty already available to us but available to us beyond the mind intuition does not come from the mind the function of the mind is to think to ponder to rationalize to make sense of things that is a very limited function but what is intuitively good 
as a decision comes from the entire background of what is knowledge inside us and that entire background of knowledge is only expressed through intuition and not through reason or not through thinking with the mind that is why people who held those workshops with me those who came to those programs they for years afterwards have been telling me how good those programs were and they helped them in their business in their executive work uh, i also use some of that methods in my own executive work both as a civil servant in india and as a businessman in united states so these are methods of using meditation for purposes other than discovering your inner self but what i am now suggesting is that if you know your inner self you are successful in everything and you don't have to do extra meditation for working outside of yourself so that is why meditation of discovering your true self is very important in life and in an afterlife if you believe in one afterlife can also be discovered if it is exist or not through meditation otherwise we do not know if what happens after death we do not know if there is any afterlife but through meditation we can discover our afterlife also so meditation is useful in many ways some people think that meditation on the sound is very useful i was sent many tapes of nice beautiful sounds which were called meditation sounds they were sounds of the seashore the water knocking against the shore made a sound those were birds chirping in the forest those were wind blowing through the trees those were very beautiful sounds and again when listen to those sounds they gave us peace and that was called the meditation on the sound but another meditation on the sound which i encourage listen to the sound of your own self while listen to a sound produced from outside if you listen to the sound which is coming from your own self inner self you will notice that all the sounds that we hear from outside are originating from the sound within yourself nothing exists outside including the sound outside except from the sound within us this sound within us has been called by different names is called the eternal sound the nad in sanskrit it is called the word in the bible it is called kalma is called islam is called by so many ways this inner sound is nothing more but the manifestation of our own conscious being that we as conscious beings exist inside us is expressed at the physical level in a sound it does not mean that we are just a sound like other sound that we hear it only is a representation that when we are in the physical body our inner self is manifesting so that we can feel we are inside and it becomes audible to us what becomes audible is like a sound it can be a word it can be a voice it can be any kind of sound it can be musical sounds all those sounds can come from within ourselves the mind speaks also is a sound inside us we think that is also a sound inside us so there are several sounds coming from within if we look at all the sounds that come from within which we can do easily by meditating upon our own self then we discover the sound has a much larger role to play than we ever understood before so today i am talking about meditation because i get hundreds of emails literally hundreds maybe thousands saying it's so hard to meditate our mind does not let us meditate we try to put our attention on the third eye center behind the eyes the mind takes us out all the time this is a problem that is so common that people have been meditating for several years regularly and they can't make any progress because the mind throws them out the mind is doing a good job the mind was not created so that we can listen to our own self the mind was created so we can through the five senses in the body appreciate what the creation is to go around and look for pleasures and joys of life and in order to make them more joyful more pleasurable to face some pains and difficulties also so this was a game being played by the mind so that we can have an appreciation of what is outside the mind was created for that purpose 
the mind was never created to find the truth of our own self that is why to try to use the mind to discover who we are is not a very wise wise step at all people who think a lot and uh, believe that by thinking a lot by realizations through the mind we can discover who we are have always failed they get up such a tangled up uh, view of themselves they do not know who we are they continuously identify themselves with the mind and begin to believe the mind the fact that we can think is ourself they don't realize what is making the mind alive what is making our body alive mind is not life mind is a function of a living thing of a living being that is why we are constantly troubled by a mind given to us for use outside and we are trying to use it to go inside the mind will not take us inside now let me give you some very simple steps to make it easier for you to move from the meditation you are trying to some more effective meditation first point we are always meditating with our body we put our body in a certain position we sit upright and we say we close our eyes and we are meditating we are constantly aware of our body because that's where we are meditating we are constantly aware where we are sitting we are constantly aware that we are closing our eyes we are constantly aware of our head we are constantly aware of our eyes if we are constantly aware of these things parts of the body how can we go within how can our attend how can our attention go within at all therefore that's a big flaw to think that you are a body and you are meditating in the body does not work the very first step is if you want to make meditation successful forget about the body you have to forget about the body and you are somebody other than the body but sitting inside the body that you can achieve through simple trick of closing your eyes and imagining you are inside the body now you will find that when you imagine you are inside the body your eyes are closed but you are looking in front what eyes are you using to look in front with the imaginative self inside you can look anywhere you like you can imagine things in front of you with your eyes closed some eyes are seeing that do you realize that the eyes that are seeing things with the imaginative self is part of your inner self it is the inner self that you are seeing the inner self whose eyes are seeing can also then hear inner sounds you can speak loudly with your eyes closed with your mouth closed and hear it inside which ears are hearing that inside ears not outside you can stand up and sit down with your imagination with your eyes closed with your body sitting on the on the chair or sitting on the floor which body is going up and down it is your inner self so the very first step i am suggesting is if you want to have successful meditation do not meditate with the physical body meditate with your imaginative body which you will discover happens to be nothing more than your astral body we talk of astral body radiant forms all the time without even thinking that the imaginative self we are creating is the astral body the astral body means that we have the sense perceptions intact and no physical presence do you realize that when you imagine yourself inside the eyes you are really having no experience of the physical body but only of that which you are imagining and that has all the sense perceptions you can see with that body you can hear with that body you can smell with that body you can taste with that body you can walk with that body you can fly with that body something that you cannot do with the physical body so imagine the flexibility that is available to us by simply thinking about an inner body in imagination and reaching there no no meditation is required just to reach there it's simply an act of imagination which you can do by sitting anywhere and closing your eyes and imagining that you are inside and seeing things from there the eyes that see without the opening of eyes physical eyes the ears that can hear without using the physical ears 
the tongue that can taste. If you recall, many of you have attended some of my meditation workshops where I did the experiment that you can place flowers on the table, you can put a drink on the table, and you can put a dish of a snack on your table, and you were able to have the experience of all of them. You could smell the flowers, see the flowers, you could taste the drink, see it, smell it, you could eat the uh, snacks, and even after the exercise was over, the smell of the flowers was still with you. The taste of the snack was still with you, as if you had had a real experience. You used all your five senses intact, with the physical body taking no part in it at all. That is the body with which meditation starts, if you want to withdraw your attention inside. How is that possible? That is because the inner body will give you experiences which you are not even imagining. Imagination is merely the beginning. Imagination only means that you are reaching out to something that has five senses without the physical body. Once you reach that, and then you think that you are sitting the way you like to sit on a chair on the ground with the inner body, and close the inner eyes, and then when you try to imagine with the inner eyes closed, you begin to see things you are not even imagining. Even in the experiment that I do in workshops, where you are just imagining the flowers that you have seen outside, and you imagine the flowers inside, hardly anybody has ever seen the flowers exactly what they were imagining. Many of you saw flowers with light emitting from them. The color of the drinks would change. The color of the flowers would change while you are watching them. And things would happen which never happen physically, but they happen all the time in, internally in the first level of higher awareness. So higher awareness is not very far. It's very close to us if you do it properly. Make good use of imagination. Do not treat it as imaginary. There's a big difference between what is imaginary and what is imagination. Imaginary is what we automatically consider as unreal. And therefore, we don't believe in it. Imagination is an exercise to reach an awareness of our sense perceptions without keeping the awareness of the physical body intact. So when you begin to imagine your inner self, you will automatically find that you are getting less aware of the physical body. That's the nature of our consciousness, of our awareness, that when we concentrate our awareness on any object whatsoever, the awareness of the other objects begins to dim and ultimately erase completely. And that is why we, they have, we have been uh, hearing stories of old uh, rulers who were able to practice archery, who were able to practice shooting arrows, and they were taught that when we can only see the target and not what is surrounding it, you'll be good marksman. It worked on the same principle. When we concentrate our attention on any one thing, the more we concentrate, the more we become less aware of what is around. The same principle applies here. If you concentrate on nothing else except your own imaginary self, which you have created by simple exercise of imagination, you will discover that the awareness of the physical body begins to go away automatically. Some people write to me that I get numb in my legs when I am meditating and maybe I am withdrawing my attention. And I had to write back, no, your attention is in the numbness of the legs and not on yourself at all. You are still in the body. We spend so much time in our physical bodies that we have identified ourselves with the physical bodies. So it becomes very difficult for us to think that there is something more than the physical body. That is why we take so much time in trying to realize that a simple exercise, like imagining ourselves inside, is the right way to go within. So I am recommending to you now that if you want to be successful in meditation, Please meditate with your inner astral self, which you might even call it as your imaginative self. If you do that, the withdrawal of attention from the body will be so automatic and gradual that you will not even notice it. You will not even feel that you are pulling your attention from anywhere. If you still feel that you are 
pulling your attention from the body, then you are still in the body. Then you are still in the physical sense perceptions. The, the difference in the two, difference in the physical body and the astral body or the imaginative self is simply there is no matter in the inner self and there is matter in the physical self. There is no other difference. All other functions that we are performing with the physical body can be performed by the inner self. It has the same mind. It has the same soul. It has the same identity. There is no change whatsoever. When you go within, only after very deep meditation, which means staying longer and longer in that state, do you discover that you have been in that state earlier before this body was born. But that takes a lot of time to go to that steady state when you completely forget your body. And that's the only body you know of which is inside. Now this is the first step in discovering who you are. But the first step is very important because if you don't go through first step, you'll never go to the second step. The second step is to discover that the astral body is nothing more than our sense perceptions being used by the mind. It's a very big discovery. That only happens if you can have deep meditation with the inner self, the astral body. That means long sessions of meditation with the astral body where you discover that where are these sense perceptions coming from? And your mind which has been thinking so many in words and languages suddenly begins to reveal itself. That is, a, It is just creating and making use of sense perceptions. The mind is a great receptor of sensations, of experiences. And the mind is merely dividing that experience of a perception into different sense perceptions. It's a wonderful experience to go from the inner perceptions divided into five and then to find that the whole of series of five perceptions are coming from one single perception of the mind. And mind is using to divide these to have a greater variety of experiences. This nature of the mind is discovered only the deep meditation when you can even forget the sense perceptions. Process is very similar. The process is then to, to understand the mind, to put your attention on the mind and understand how it works. The mind will think, mind, and you will watch the thinking. When you watch your mind thinking, you are surprised that who is watching the mind thinking. If you were the mind, you would not be watching the mind thinking. You would be the thinker. But if you can watch the mind thinking, you are obviously not the mind. And that discovery comes with deep meditation with the inner self, that the watching of the mind is being done by your real self your inner self, which is not even the mind. First time you will discover that you are consciousness, the ability to not only watch, but to create what you are watching. It's a very great ability, and that is what the power of consciousness is all about. We think that the consciousness is merely a function of being aware of things. No, that's a very small function of consciousness. The highest function of consciousness is that what it becomes conscious of becomes its creation. The whole of creation that we are observing at the physical plane. The whole of the creation we observe at the astral plane. The whole of the creation that we observe at the region of the mind are all being created by consciousness. We become conscious of them and they get created. This power of consciousness is the real truth that we are looking for to be able to find how are we alive, how are we conscious, how do we know what is going on, where does this knowledge come from, where does this awareness come from, how are we able to look at this world, how are we able to feel that we exist. All these questions are answered when we understand the nature of real consciousness. That only comes when we can transcend even the region of the mind, even the mental self of our own. Now I must add at this time that by meditating, which means practicing something on our own, we are limited. We are limited by the mind itself. Because when we try to do something, the mind plays a role. The mind says, let's try. Only the mind can say, let's try. What about our soul? Does the soul also say, let's try? 
Never. Soul is life. It does not need to try anything. It's existence. It is simply being. So when you are simply being, there is no question of trying or making attempt or try or making efforts. All effort is made by the mind. All efforts arise from thoughts. The thinking mind makes effort. Thinking mind tries for things. And therefore, it's the thinking mind that constantly tells us, do this, do that. And that creates a limitation of what meditation can do. Because when we meditate, trying to meditate, then we are limited by the mind. We cannot go beyond the mind because we are using the mind to try to meditate. Therefore, to go beyond the mind is not that simple. A lot of people I have met who are very enlightened, but they are enlightened about the mind. And they don't hesitate to say, we have found a higher mind. Well, of course, you can call it a higher mind also. Great master used to explain that there are actually three kinds of mind and they function differently. The mind in the physical body operates very differently considering the body to be a reality, considering that the body is the only reality. Therefore, the mind functions like it's a brain power inside our head and we think from there to make decisions about what is happening outside of ourselves. We believe that the self is the body and the world in which we live is outside. And therefore, the mind functions like that. He used to call it the pindi mind or the physical mind. So the physical mind functions differently. But when we go inside and use sense perceptions independently of the physical body, it becomes the astral mind or the undiman. The undimind, which means it has now gone to the stage of discovering a world created purely by sense perceptions and having no matter or atoms or molecules in it. But the experiences are very similar, except that the experiences of sense perceptions inside, they are more beautiful because they are more available and the variety of experiences available by sense perception alone, without the limitation of molecules and atoms, is far greater. We have a much greater variety of experiences in the astral plane. So the undi man or the astral mind has a much larger experience than the physical mind has. If we go higher up, we go to the world of concepts, the world from where the mind functions without having the use of any sense perceptions. The concepts that we have there are really purely mental concepts and they are concepts which cannot be expressed in sense perceptions. The concept of freedom, the concept of the self, the concept of liberties, the concept of um, so many things that are concept of a way of living. These are all concepts that are created by the mind without having the use of sense perceptions. Then they are developed into sense perceptions and become experiences at the undi self. But the conceptual state of the mind, which we call the current mind or the mind that has gone beyond, the, the sense perceptions, that is the causal mind, which is causing all experiences. A very proper term given to the causal le level of consciousness, because the causal mind operates to create everything that we are experiencing. But this knowledge that what we are looking outside is coming from inside can only come through meditation. Otherwise, it's very hard to believe that the world outside of ourselves is not independently there. It is so arranged, the sense perceptions pick it up in such a way that we cannot but accept it's an external world because we test its reality by our sense perceptions. If I want to test, I have got a cup of water in my hand now, which I believe you can see. I want to test, is it real or am I making it up? If I said, reality is, and I am giving you this message, reality is, I am making up the cup. Nobody will believe me. I am holding it. You are watching it. I am watching it. I am touching it. And the water in it. I am even tasting it. It's very good taste with the lemon in it. How can I say the cup and the water and the lemon are not real? What is the basis for my believing that all this is real? The basis is nothing more than the fact I was able to see it I was able to touch it, 
I was able to taste it. I could taste the lemon in it. I was using my sense perceptions to develop my my proof, validation of its reality. Now imagine if this is the only way we can prove what is real. Don't we do the same things in the dreams? When we have a dream, if I saw the same cup of water in the dream, I would touch it, I would taste it, and I would declare it's real, and I would mean it, and for me it would be real. How long will it remain real? Only till I wake up. Till then, it's real. The moment I wake up, I'll find it was not real. Why? Because I'll remember. There was no glass, so I can't see the glass where it's gone. But I remember touching it. I remember drinking the water. I remember tasting the lemon. The sense perceptions that occurred to make the reality of the glass were responsible for making the glass. Supposing I did not have those sense perceptions, there was no glass, no water. The sense perceptions created that glass of water, and it remained real so long as I was sleeping. The same thing is happening now. I am proving the reality, validation of the reality of this cup and water because I can use my sense perceptions to validate it. If I were to wake up from this state, supposing I wake up entirely into the astral state by meditation or otherwise, what is otherwise? When we die in the physical body, it's otherwise. We automatically leave the body and we are no longer in the physical world. So by either of the two methods. If I were to wake up from this state, I would find what I called real was totally based upon my validation through sense perceptions. That is why sense perceptions are a very important part of our understanding of reality. We have no other means of understanding reality at this time except sense perceptions. Nor do we have any other means of understanding reality at the astral plane except sense perceptions. To be able to go beyond that, we have to go to the state where the mind is creating concepts. The concept which translate into experiences is again in sense perceptions. The total perception of the mind only combines the three, five sense perceptions. It does not take out of a world created by perception. That is why the perception is responsible for our reality definition of reality. Is anything real at all? If we can just wake up and make the whole thing dreamlike, and it disappears, only our experiences remain, only memory remains. Is there anything real at all? We can keep on waking up again and again. We don't know how many times we can wake up. Maybe it may be a thousand times. We have no idea how many times we can wake up. But one thing is certain: that there is someone who is having a dream, and that someone. Who wakes up, always wakes up, does not change. Is the same dreamer who wakes up, even if he wakes up a hundred times or a thousand times, the dreamer who wakes up is still the same dreamer. That is where we come to a better definition of reality. The reality is not the dream, but the dreamer. The reality is not the experience, but the experiencer. The reality is not the world. But the self that is experiencing the world, that is why they say that self-realization is the ultimate truth, and I agree with that. Realizing who is having the experience is the truth, because going to the self, discovering yourself will reveal to you the self alone is permanent and eternal. Everything else changes. Everything else changes. Everything else built change into it. Even the highest levels of experiences, even experiences which we cannot understand, like experiences beyond space and time, which are impossible for the mind to understand, are changeable. They are destructible. That is why they continuously change. But the self that experiences all these never changes, and that is why. If the definition of reality is that which never changes, no matter what, then the only reality is our own self. But we have to discover our own self by becoming unaware of the sheaths of layers that we have placed upon ourselves for a variety of experiences. 
this physical body is nothing more but to give us physical experiences we should enjoy them we should look at them as an opportunity wearing a costume and acting on a stage when the show is over we take it off anyway we can take it off sometimes earlier but certainly after the end of the show similarly we are wearing inner garments for different experiences wearing the garment of uh, the astral sense perceptions the astral body that also goes away and if we are able to go higher than the astral body we can discover something very interesting we can discover the astral self which we think is only an imaginary self also has a life of birth and death that's amazing we are always constantly being reminded of the physical body having birth and death that don't lose time you have a short time here between birth and death and therefore do whatever you can during this short span of time and we don't realize that what is an imaginative self inside also has a birth and a death in the same way and the birth and death takes place and the vision of the birth and death of an astral self takes place from the causal plane if you can rise above the awareness of the sense perceptions which meditation enables us deep meditation can enable us by meditating with the astral self to become unaware of it and be aware of our mental and causal self there you discover that even the astral self has a birth and death and therefore your reality is not here it's a changeable thing higher up in the mind you think you are permanent that is why so many swamis and yogis i have met so many during my journey of 93 years in this life i have met people who are considering the universal mind the ultimate mind to be the ultimate reality because they cannot see any change in the mind but the mind also changes if you are able to watch something from beyond the mind from your own self true self not the mind the true self that gives life to the mind that gives life to the astral self that gives life to the physical self that true self which is life itself consciousness itself that truth if you want to find you have to go beyond the mind but the mind and meditation cannot take you there that's why we have to find a different way very few people come to this world with that awareness of of a state of awareness that is beyond the mind very few people exist like that i was very fortunate that as a seeker i was able to find by coincidences a master hazur maharaj baba sawan singh who was a perfect living master and could operate from beyond the mind when he was in his physical body he looked like an ordinary physical person with a white beard of course people appreciated his white beard so did i as a child he would carry me to the candy shop and i would catch the hair of his beard i still remember that little event of a childhood he would buy me some burfi that indian sweet i can still taste the sweet sweetness of that burfi even today he has yet so much compassion and love in his personality that when we were near him something affected us which we could not explain not only i was affected i thousands of people i saw were affected by his presence it looked like love radiated from him it looked like there was a pull coming and we could not explain where the pull was coming from that pull was coming from a love that he had an unconditional love a love with no conditions no barriers no requirements at all a love with no judgment at all that was coming from the great master and that is why i was very fortunate to experience the pull of that love by great master now i want to tell you that if you have to go beyond the mind no meditation can take you there but the pull of love can take you there because it was some time before i discovered that love does not come from the mind at all mind can destroy the experience of love too much thinking can destroy the experience of love but love does not come from the mind at all love comes from the self love comes from the soul and that is why the pull of love coming from the soul from beyond the mind alone can take us beyond the mind not meditation that is why it's correctly said that real meditation is meditation with love and devotion we say love and devotion because 
Love comes and catches us. Love traps us. Love zaps us. And the reaction we have is to be devoted to that love. We become devotees automatically. The devotion is not practiced. Devotion is not something to be practiced like meditation. Meditation can be practiced. Devotion is a response to love. When you feel love, something happens to you. Whether you call it return of love, whether you call it you also fall in love, or you call it devotion. But that devotion that comes by experiencing love is the secret to going beyond the mind. Because the love is coming from the self. Not only love is coming from the self, that intuition I spoke to you in the beginning about also comes from the self. The beauty that we can see around us and the ugliness we can compare it with also comes from the self. So there are several functions the self performs without the use of the mind, without the use of the sense perceptions, without the use of the physical body. And they are all working while we are still in the physical body, still in the astral body, still in the mental self. So the functions of the soul are continuously available to us with all the covering that put upon ourselves. Of course, they get hidden a little bit inside and we can't see them so clearly. We can see the outside very clearly. We can see our physical self very clearly. We can see that we our imagination can exist. We can see it. That we are thinking machines, we can also feel. But we cannot see love so clearly, but we can experience it. Therefore, it's hidden right behind all these three covers. And it's just peeping out from there. And that makes us so happy when we experience love, even in the physical world. From anyone, any love we experience is a great feeling for us and touches us inside. That is because love is not touching our minds. Love is touching ourself. It's coming from the self to the self. It's coming from the soul to the soul. So therefore, our ultimate reality is radiating love. And that is why when great master Baba Savan Singh would walk, people would look at him and get pulled. There was something strange happening to us, all of us who watched him. That we were, why is he showing so much love to us? He was using no words. He was not repeating like we repeat now, I love you, I love you, I love you. Keep on saying that and there's nothing inside us to say. His peer presence was the expression of love. So when these kind of people who have already attained the awareness beyond the mind come into our life, we call them perfect living masters. And the perfection of the masters lies in the fact that they have awareness of themselves, of the real self, beyond the mind, even when they are in a physical body. Their awareness does not go away. We lose our awareness by holding our awareness at the local stage. We are physical, our awareness is physical. We go to a higher level, our awareness is that level. But we do not hold all the awarenesses together. But a perfect living master, his perfection consists of that he can hold all awarenesses, including overriding the imperfections that are created by the mind. So that is why the real secret to discovering the self is to seek the self inside. Not with the mind, not with the tongue, not by shouting, but by internal seeking, which comes only from the soul. Without having used any words, the seeking comes. When you seek, since the whole creation outside is being built from inside, you will discover the seeking inside is what is bringing the experience of a perfect living master into your life. A perfect living master is not somebody who you have to look for. You look for him inside by your seeking and he appears outside. Of course, sometimes it's hard to know who is a perfect living master because you are seeking inside and you are expecting something very spectacular to happen outside and an ordinary person appears just like yourself, just like myself. Ordinary person appears and we say, how could he be a perfect living master? We have no eyes to see. The soul does not use eyes to see. The soul does not use uh, ears to hear. The soul does not even perceive. Soul is aware. Soul is aware through love, the pull of love. That pull of love is not describable easily because it happens to us and there is no way really to describe what's happening. 
we try to drown it out with our own thinking, with our own experience of the physical and astral worlds, and therefore we don't realize for a while. But the pull is so strong, especially if it has come in response to our seeking, that we cannot get rid of it. The seeking becomes stronger, the pull becomes stronger, and we suddenly begin to see more in that human being than an ordinary person. And we begin to see he is full of love, and love is radiating from him, and we get pulled by that love. When love pulls us, we discover, is it pulling outside or inside us? Are we projecting everything? Of course, meditation helps us to see that we are projecting everything. If we combine the two things, meditation and the experience of love and devotion, what would happen? With the experience of meditation, we would know that the whole world outside is being projected from inside. That gives us a very good indication that the perfect living master we are looking at outside is not outside at all. He is being projected from inside. And he is responding to our seeking inside. We don't look inside, therefore he is appearing outside. But once we use meditation to go to the state where we can see inside, we discover the perfect living master was always inside, as close to the self as is possible. As close as possible. How close? It's the same, it's identical. That discovery takes place right at the end of our spiritual journey, that what we thought was a human being, what I thought was a human being with a white beard, was no different than the ultimate self that I was looking for. The discovery of the ultimate self being expressed as a human being outside is the greatest experience, I think, that is possible in this world. The greatest experience is that our own self can be experienced as a human being outside in this physical world. And we call him a perfect living master. So when we get initiated or accepted by a perfect living master, what does it mean? It means our spiritual journey has ended. That our seeking, which might have been going on for several lifetimes, has ended. And now we have found the secret to going to discover our own self, which is now visible outside. If it's visible outside, how about closing our eyes and seeing it inside? It's a great experience. We see a white bearded man, I see a white bearded man, the great master walking outside, I close my eyes, I imagine he's sitting there. And for a while, I keep on thinking, I am just remembering how I saw him. And then he suddenly begins talking inside, as he used to talk outside. I discover he's not only my memory of remembering him, but he's functioning like he's an imaginative self of myself, equally live inside. Then I meditate more and I find even in the mental state, he is again inside. At the stage when we are beyond the mind, in a state beyond the world of space and time, in the world which can never be described to the mind at all, because it cannot understand a word of what is beyond space and time, there also I find that the man who was outside is also inside. At the top we find it was the same self I was trying to seek who just made an expression as a perfect living master outside. What a wonderful way to discover the self. And what a wonderful way to create a world outside at so many levels just from the simple fact that we are consciousness and consciousness, being conscious of anything, can create reality. There are so many levels of realities we have created with our consciousness. I am sharing this experience with you. Because you are seekers. If you are not seekers, you can close down and not listen to me anymore. But if you are seekers, seek within. Use this combination of meditation with love and devotion. Do your meditation with love and devotion. Experience the love that comes from the Master. Be in His presence as much as you can, physically, astrally, causally. Your mind may have some objections to some of these things. Ignore the mind. Follow your intuition. The mind is not interested in going in. The mind was not created for that. Therefore, do not try to use the mind to go within. Use your seeking 
your intuitive seeking, your self, inner self, to go within through the experience of love and devotion. If you cannot feel the devotion enough, be more devoted in the way you are devoted to things outside. We fall in love with other people outside here. We fall in love with other objects outside and we hold on to those objects. Our attention is captured by those objects. We get devoted to them. Why can't we be devoted to the inner experiences even though it looks like a memory of the Master? Remember the Master and express your devotion the same way like you can express it outside. As you will find, it works. Meditation to be successful for higher achievement of results. To achieve the self-realization, it has to be a combination of meditation with love and devotion. I hope some of the things I have told you will be useful for you in your own meditation. I look forward to talking to more of you. And if these lockdowns end, I hope to have a, a meditation workshop sometime in September. We'll give the information to you later. I am very happy to see all of you around the globe at this time. And let us, uh, uh, meantime, practice what we can and keep ready for more realizations inside. Thank you very much for your patient listening. And I am very happy to get more reports from many of you. You are all well and happy and the COVID-19 has not affected you and you have been saved. I always thank Great Master for the protection he is giving all of us. Thank you very much.